In early 2021, I posted a wishlist video sharing ideas that myself and fans of Destroying Humans came up with if they ever decided to remake Destroying Humans 2. Shortly after that video was posted, THQ Nordic teased us with Crypto 138 appearing in a trailer. Later that year, the game would be officially announced. Now here we are, nearly two years since that wishlist video came out. The game's been out since late August, and it's time to look back and see what was in that wishlist video and see what came true and what didn't. First off, no rush for the game. First off, I said no rush for the game. Well, considering the state the game launched in, it may have had a little bit of a rush. It launched and it was playable, despite some issues and crashing every now and then. The good news is the dev team is working on patches. I also mentioned that maybe they shouldn't release it on PS4 and Xbox One. Now, at the time I made that video, I didn't think it would be this hard to get a PS5 or Series X still at this point. Unfortunately, it is, and as a result of that, not as many people are able to play the game. THQ has stated that the game worlds are larger and more complex than the first remake, which would mean if the game had came out on the older systems, it would have had worse performance and visual quality than the first remake. I said that they should have day and night cycles and weather. This wasn't added to the game, and it changes randomly when on a mission or loading into a map. Aaron brought up that it would be nice to have more realistic snow in Tunguska, and that was added to the game. Just like in Red Dead Redemption 2, as you walk through the snow, it leaves a path behind you. Solaris does now have moon gravity, which is great. And you can also destroy the domes on Solaris, which is a nice bonus. We wanted more skins and skins for the saucer. Black Forest Games delivered. There's a lot of new skins this time around, including all the skins from the first remake, and the saucer now has some skins as well. Not that many, but it's nice to have them. I said it would be cool to turn on and off upgrades for weapons, and that was added into the game. You can now use DNA to refund upgrades and then use the Furotech cells to buy other upgrades, or just save them until we want to turn those upgrades back on again. Mental abilities, unfortunately, cannot be downgraded. Now speaking of mental power upgrades, you use the Gene Blender just like the original, and one thing that would have been cool to have be another category in the Gene Blender for videos, like how it was in the original game. Star Wars Josh Smith said that weapon skins would be a great addition, unfortunately this was not added. He also mentioned having skins relate to invasion sites. This was added to the game and you unlocked them for completing certain missions in those worlds. Aaron brought up having different parts of Crypto's armor to be mixed up with customization. Another feature which was not added to the game. Maybe if they do a third game, they'll do it. Co-op has returned and reprobed, but what hasn't returned is the annoying leash that prevented the players from going too far away. You can now be on complete opposite sides of the map and you won't have any issues. I said they should increase the player count to 4 and have online and split screen options. Unfortunately it was only split screen and just two players. When they released Clone Carnage, I thought that they had made that to see how the game would work with online multiplayer and I was expecting them to use this as sort of a prototype for what Destroying Humans 2 could have for online. But sadly, the game does not have online multiplayer. Now does this mean it's not going to have it in the future? I don't really know, I'm not a developer or anything, but it would be nice if they did add that. Now there are ways to play it online by streaming it to friends and have them controlling a player 2 controller. As for co-op minigames, it's the same as the original. PK Tennis and Duel, however, they are now accessible in the main menu only, and you have to exit whatever mode you are currently in to get to them. Now 
Mission replayability, which was added in the first remake, has made its way into Reprobed. You can replay any story mission, odd job, or arc boodle cult mission. And they're also organized through story, side, and arc boodle. Another cool feature with the mission replays is mutators, which is basically cheats. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I said they should bring challenges back, and they did, as a DLC though. For some reason, I'm not able to play it right now, despite the fact that I've purchased a Drista Skill Edition. This is a problem on Sony's end, since I'm playing it on the PlayStation 5. Now, I've seen some clips of these challenges, and it's just like the first remake's challenges. Abduction, destruction, and all these things. They've been brought back to the new game, which is fun to have. The new systems have more capabilities, which I stated could be great for the game. I was thinking they'd have no loading screens, but they still do, at least they don't last that long. And the artwork is nice to see. The cutscene where Crypto flies his saucer was unfortunately removed. And that could have been a great cover up for the loading. More realistic destruction. Well, we didn't get the Red Faction style destruction, but the way buildings get destroyed now looks a lot nicer than the first remake. With DAH-1, they exploded like they were full of propane. Propane accessories. This time around, they actually crumbled to the ground, leaving a big cloud of smoke and embers. I'm not sure if this game has ray tracing or not, as I didn't see anything about it in the game's settings when I played on PC. But the lighting and graphics really looks good. I came up with my own idea in this wishlist video about how the controls could be, since they'd have some new abilities. I was expecting Free Love to be a mental power like it was in the original, that you would activate with the D-pad. They ended up changing this into a weapon, and it functions a lot like how the Hypno Beam did back way in the beta from the original Pandemic games. At first, it seemed a little weird to have it this way, but I really love how they've implemented it into the game. And when you body snatch people, it auto selects to it, so you could just make people start dancing whenever. William suggested it would be cool to hypnotize a cop to lower the alert level. The hypnosis in the game ended up being the same as the first remake. Forget, follow, and protect. Also, William recently released a retrospective of the Straw Human series, which I recommend checking out. Star Bonding suggested that the old PK system should return. Well, we didn't exactly get it back, but what we did get was this. PK Slam, which lets you pick stuff up with PK and then smack other targets around with them. It's really powerful and fun to use. However, you can't use your guns while doing this, as the triggers now smack things into... things. <laughs> I don't know how to word that, really. I said it would be cool for Gastro to target enemies of your choosing. That's pretty much what they did. Now, instead of just spawning Gastro, you can also use the weapon to target people. Just fire it off and hold the trigger again, and he'll start shooting his gun like a machine gun at whatever you're pointing at. I had some suggestions for weapon upgrades. I said that the dislocator should have upgrades to explode and home in on people. That's pretty much how it ended up being. The one thing I wasn't expecting, though, was for the Dislocator to become basically the Super Baller from Path of the Furon. I really enjoy using this weapon, but I do miss the way it used to function at times. I know it. So 
some other weapon upgrade ideas ended up just being how the weapon worked. Like the anal probe, for instance. It returns ammo and the brain, but only if it's critical shot. One of the coolest upgrades they added to the game was that when you fire the ion detonator and you blow somebody up with it, they have a chance of becoming a mini ion detonator. Which you can then PK throw at more people to vaporize even more people. I suggested that they would upgrade Mind Flash and Free Love to have people not notice you when it wears off. This did not happen for those abilities. However, Body Snatch did get an upgrade similar to this. Once you body snatch someone, nearby people instantly get their mind erased, and it, it makes a clean snatch easier. I suggested that Skate should let you take less damage while skating. Well, we didn't get a less damage upgrade, but what we did get, in my opinion, was better. Now you can get an upgrade which makes it so when you get hurt, it won't stop you from skating, which was really annoying in the first remake, where you just try to skate and someone shoots you and you stop. Yeah, that was annoying, but they fixed it. They also added a super jump upgrade, which is great. It lets you use up all your jetpack fuel instantly and launches you high up into the sky real fast. You don't go any higher than you normally would with the jetpack, but going up this height so fast is real fun. Having cheats in the game was something a lot of people wanted to see. And with the mutators, they are now in the game. However, they are only available when replaying a mission, unfortunately. But there is actually a glitch in the game, which lets you use them in free mode. Hopefully they don't patch this, because it's a really fun glitch to perform, and messing around with unlimited ammo is great. Spamming the dislocator all over the place, and not having to look for Meteor Strike ammo. Because the Meteor Strike, the ammo is still pretty rare to find. And speaking of the Meteor Strike, it feels a little weak against buildings. I think the humans reinforced these buildings a little too much after seeing what Crypto did in the 50s. Because they do take a while to destroy with the Meteor Strike. And even the sonic boom and death ray takes some while to do this. I mean, look at this. It took nearly an entire clip to destroy this building. Quantum Sea Constructor, that's still a one-hit kill for everything, though. Now back to these cheats, which are now called mutators. It has ones that we would expect, like unlimited health and ammo, but it has some more fun ones as well, such as big head mode, low gravity, spawning ninjas, spawning random objects that blow up to give you some challenges, spawning majestic agent ghosts, and even more. Now here's what I suggested back in the video. Well, look, look. Now some of the cheats that I thought of were unlimited ammo, health, cloak, you get the idea with that. Big head mode. Low Gravity, NPC Brawl, where all the NPCs will start fighting each other, kind of like how the Saints Row Cheats was. Every time someone dies, they explode. Michael Bay the Human Cheat? Wait, what? <laughs> Michael Bay the Cheat? <laughs> Tiny Humans. So now Crypto is the tall one. Sticky PK. This one would be like Katamari. So when you bump, when holding something with PK, if something bumps into it, they'll get stuck to that object. Now, maybe they'll just actually put that in the game as a feature. Who knows? Full alert meter at all time. That'd be pretty fun to have. No matter how much you hide, they'll always find you. No matter how much you hide, they'll always find you. There's no clone counter for the game. But it does track how many times you die. I would think the saucer having a stereo that would play music of the time would be cool and not just having songs that play only on certain missions. Well, unfortunately, this did not happen, but they do have more songs in the game. Here's some uh, things I actually added to it. Sonic Boom, in a way, does seem like it launches things around more now. I shot some cars with it and it made the car move around a little bit more. There was no first person mode. The death ray leaving burn marks in the ground Oh uh, yeah, this is something that I should bring up, which is, it's a strange thing that happened. I suggested that it'd be cool to have different surfaces react differently. 
Well, that didn't happen. And for some reason, all the maps in the game, it might just be a memory issue because there's so much stuff happening in the game, but all the maps, the burn marks despawn if you make too much. Now, Solaris, for whatever reason, this isn't an issue. Also, photo mode was added. And photo mode's great. Now, I feel like they wanted to have some more stuff with it, because if you look at the user interface, it looks like they wanted to add some more features to it. As you can see, there's some icons, which looks like you'd be able to go to different pages to change, I guess, color settings and exposure and whatnot, like most photo modes have. Either way, it's still a great photo mode. The only downside is no death ray or zap matic shooting during it. A 139 skin would be cool. Oh yeah, I wish they would have done that. Maybe they'll add some more skins in an update later on, and maybe they'll even add a 139 skin as like, hey, look what we're working on. Ooh, a sur the survival mode would have been awesome, honestly. To stay in this area and fight waves of humans. I mean... That's kind of what it is like in free mode when you have a full alert level. <laughs> well, my comment in this... Well, my reply to this comment basically sums up what I was just about to say. <laughs> and his reply to my reply... Is actually what happens when your shield breaks. There's an upgrade which makes the shield explode. I've never really had this happen though, because... When it's that low, I just die instantly. Either that or I escape before it could happen. This user wanted to have a way to keep the disguise from dying, or an upgrade that keeps the host alive longer. Well, you actually can. Just use the free love, start a big dance party, and it'll regenerate your health. Bring back the salad days in the extras menu. Well, it is in the game. However, as far as I know, nobody's been able to play it yet. There was a glitch that prevented it from being played, and they say they've patched it. However, nobody has seemed to figure out how to play it yet. I haven't seen the video yet, and I'd rather discover it in the game itself rather than just going through the files and finding it. Okay, well that's about it. I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Uh, I'm really enjoying the game. It does have some issues every now and then, but that's... Every game has an issue, of course, you know. Photo mode is so much fun to use. I've, had, I've taken a lot of pictures with the photo mode. If you check my Destroy Humans Twitter, you can see a lot of my photo mode pictures that I've shared there. And you know, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Nothing else to say. Whatever things that they didn't do that was in this wish list, maybe they will do it with the third one, because I think they are going to make the third one of their own. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, the last cutscene of the last side mission kind of hints about the next game happening and being in the 80s. Also, what Natalia does in the final cutscene, yeah, that's a, a big uh, spoiler, so I'm not going to say it in case you haven't seen it, but it's it's great and it's opening the series up to so, much more more, so many more possibilities I can't speak. Goodbye.